The Roswell crash in New Mexico that happened in 1947 is probably one of the most well-known UFO cases in existence. Today, we're gonna talk about Greg Lawson's Roswell, the after action report, as he delves into the main key players that were attached to the case of what happened so many years ago. And to kind of dissect it and to get in there and like see what seems to be truth and what seems to be fiction. So let's get into it. Whether you believe in visitors from outer space or not, the fact that something happened and was covered up, that seems to be a given and that's about the only given <laughs> that exists. This book kind of considers every aspect in the hopes of uncovering the logic and the seemingly illogical. And Greg Lawson has the extensive background with honorable military credentials and a super extensive law enforcement background. I'm gonna read a little bit from the book that gives you kind of an idea of what we're going into here. And then I'll give you a little bit more info on uh, Lawson's background as well, which is crazy extensive and very impressive. So the one fact that we do know is that something big happened that day? An event that shaped how we move forward in the reporting and investigating of the UFO phenomena. Were there bodies of otherworldly beings recovered? Did massive leaps in technology really spring from what was recovered there in Roswell? Or merely inspired by science fiction claims surrounding the reported incident? Are we being visited by superior beings with technology far superior to our own? Or are we the masters of deception, misdirection, and playing the ultimate game of smoke and mirrors, are we? I don't know. Not just with American citizens, but citizens around the world. So let me give you a little bit of Greg's background. He was, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that he was. He was a paratrooper, a counterintelligence plan deputy sheriff after leaving the army, has worked patrol, been a mental health investigator, a suicide mediator, a hostage negotiator, a SWAT team member, a scuba team leader, academy instructor, a child abuse and sex crimes detective, a homicide detective. I, there's, there's still more, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, Lake Patrol and underwater recovery team sergeant. And as a patrol, Patrol Lieutenant. And he also has a master's degree in education with a focus on complex adaptive systems and complex adaptive human systems. He takes all of that experience and then he puts it into this book that he's been collecting data and info for years and years. So this is a huge effort and just it's a really great look. And each chapter kind of takes like one key player in what happened and he, he goes into like dissecting like the interviews, what was done and what was said, and then stuff that conflicts with other stuff and like what could possibly be true. And the way he does it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, and also another mysterious thing about the Roswell crash is that two months after the debris was removed on September 18th, 1947, the United States Army Air Force transformed and became the United States Air Force. So they separated at that point. So coincidence? Who knows? Also, this case is treated like a cold case because it's been so many years. Most of the people involved have long gone on, so a lot of it's, you know, documentation. It really takes a deep dive into the key witnesses and to the people who were there and the impact they had and who was spreading misinformation and how stuff was construed and just how the interviews done didn't seem to be done under typical protocol, especially coming from his background. It's interesting to see See how it all comes together at the end and the conclusions that are made, the things that are really dug into. What I thought was interesting is with also a lot of the, the people that were involved, later on some of the main players came out and said no this was a cover-up. So you have these super high profile people, they're not like just rando citizens, they're people who were in the military at the time were like no this was a cover-up, it wasn't a weather balloon. They totally switched out the stuff when they had the whole photograph of what happened. I guess if you're not familiar with the whole Roswell case, when it did happen, a press release went out, a newspaper article came out that they had found and captured a flying disc that the military had recovered. And that was put out by one of the generals of the army. I mean, that's a pretty huge mistake if you mistake a flimsy weather balloon for a flying disc. And then it was completely 
eventually retracted and then everything was like kerfumbled and thrown into chaos and still all these years later we don't have complete answers and nothing seemed to be handled well and the documentation stuff's missing and stuff is still classified and it's kind of really wild and crazy to delve into it even deeper with this book you know you might think like hasn't Roswell been done to death oh well overall there are a ton of books about it and I mean that's the most famous UFO case so yes but I really felt like he took an honest look at all these key players that were, you know, affiliated with this case and really was able to get some nuggets of truth out of there. So if you're looking or interested or have any interest in UFOs and one of the most famous UFO crash cases surrounded by controversy and conspiracy in general... Roswell by Greg Lawson was absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. I'll have a link down below if you'd like to check it out. That is an affiliate link, so a little bit goes to the channel, and it also goes to support indie bookstores. And if you like weird and paranormal books, the next video coming up will be about another paranormal book, so stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, boop that like button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.